Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we embark upon an ambitious project to code market efficiency tests in Python. And we start today with the simplest, arguably, of them all, the runs test. Obviously, it's quite easy to code market efficiency tests for a particular sample, for a particular market in Excel, and we have got numerous videos dealing with these applications. However, if you want to test market efficiency for varying samples for different markets or want to perform it efficiently for a large number of estimations at the same time, then building your own Python script can be a go-to solution. So today we will build a Python code that would apply a runs test to any market of our choice using Yahoo Finance data from scratch. So let's start with the packages that we need to import. As usual, we need NumPy to work with arrays, Pandas to work with data frames, Y Finance to export data from Yahoo Finance, and SciPy stats for some hypothesis testing. Having imported these packages, we can proceed with specifying what the market of interest is. So let's start with the S&P 500, ticker uh, Carré GSPC, and identify the time period that we are interested in. Let's go 10 years, so from year-end 2010 until year-end 2020. Mind that Yahoo Finance recognizes this particular type of update format, so you need to input them as strings. Year, month, day, separated by hyphens. And now, finally, we can retrieve our prices using the Yahoo Finance download function input in the ticker, the start date, and the end date. And obviously, as we only care about daily um, price movements, so we don't need our open, high, and low, we can only get the adjusted close. And for simplicity, we can immediately convert it into a NumPy array, so we don't have to worry about indexing. That procedure retrieves our prices, we can see that here is our array starting at 1257 and ending at 3732. So it looks good, looks realistic. So now we can convert these prices into returns by simply dividing prices from the second day onwards onto the prices from the first day until the penultimate day and subtracting one. But that's not the only manipulation that we need to make. First of all, we need to consider that for runs test, we are concerned about the consecutive positive or negative returns, so zero returns could uh, affect our estimations tremendously. Obviously, we could simply treat zero returns as either positive returns or negative returns, or we could have treated our runs identification based on the median, but most commonly you just do it based on zero returns, so consecutive bullish or consecutive bearish uh, days. So filtering out zeros, just getting rid of them, it's perhaps the most robust way forward. Obviously, when you're dealing with market indices, it's very unlikely that a particular trading day would return 0% exactly, but when you are starting to apply it to illiquid stocks, where zero returns are very likely, this is something that might happen. So it's better to be safe than sorry. So returns would be equal to returns, only when returns are not zero. Here, we just filter out zeros altogether. And finally, this is the um, start of our uh, runs identification. We can record our n, our sample size, as the length of our uh, filtered out, uh, trimmed return array with no zeros. And we can also calculate the signs of our returns, either negative one for uh, bearish periods or plus one for bullish periods, using this flexible numpy sign function that would assign plus one for positive and minus one for negative observations. So we can enforce this code and check that our returns are indeed correctly calculated. Yes, we can see that in the correct magnitude. We can see that our 
first return is positive, then we've got a negative return, then a positive return again, and then we have got another alternating series of positive, negative, positive, meaning that our signs should reflect that. We have got one negative one one, positive return, negative return, then positive return again, and the same pattern continues uh, at the end of our sample, meaning that we have got some verification that we've done everything correctly. And now we can finally proceed to runs identification, which would be based on the signs uh, series. Consider this. What is a run? A run is a sequence of returns with the same sign, meaning that when the sign changes, our run has ended and a new run of the opposite direction has started. Basically, it means that we can calculate first differences of the signs series and identify runs based on that. So let's do the following. Let's say that runs is a new NumPy array that's calculated as a first difference of the signs array. So signs from the second until the very end, minus the signs from the start until the penultimate sign. And this series, if we print it here, would give us zero if the run is continuing, because the sign is the same, it remains the same, then it will give us two if our negative run has ended and the positive run has begun, simply because one minus minus one is positive two, that would mean that a string of negative ones has ended and a string of positive ones, however long, has begun. And negative two means, uh, conversely, that a positive run, a bullish run, has ended and the bearish run has started. So that is exactly what we need. So we can calculate the number of observed runs using the numpy count non-zero function and count both twos and negative twos, as twos would represent positive runs, negative twos would represent negative runs. The final caveat is that the final run that we um, are on right now is not being counted by this procedure. So we're always undercounting the number of runs by one. So we just need to add that in. So that is the number of observed runs. What is the expected number of runs that we would have um, observed, we would have expected to see uh, if the stock returns were random, if the returns were independent from prior returns? Well, here the logic is pretty easy and intuitive, and that is due to Walden Wolfowitz's 1940 paper that first proposed this test. If your number of runs is too high, uh, the uh, signs of your returns alternate too frequently, then you can strongly suspect that there is negative autocorrelation going on. High returns lead to low returns and vice versa. However, if the number of runs is too small, you can suspect that there is positive autocorrelation or positive serial dependence between returns, with high returns leading to high returns and uh, your series going on a bullish streak more often than it should. And uh, if the return is negative, it leads to more negative returns and series is trending in the opposite direction. So here is a very natural distinction between a high number of runs, negative autocorrelation, mean reverting, oscillating, or anti-persistent behavior of your return time series, low number of runs, positive autocorrelation, or trending, persistent behavior of the market, or number of runs close to expected, no autocorrelation, and a behavior of your time series that's consistent with the efficient market hypothesis and the random walk theory. So here, the expected number of runs can be calculated using the number of positive and negative observations from the return series, so basically from our signs. So what we need to count is the positive returns and the negative returns. And here, NumPy count non-zero also comes in handy. We can count how many signs are equal to one for positive returns, and we can count how many signs are equal to negative one for negative returns. And then our expected number of runs can be calculated using the following formula. Two times the positive returns times negative returns divided by the total number of observations, which is n as per this calculation over here. We obviously could have said positive returns plus negative returns. 
as we filtered out our returns from zeros here, which is very, very uh, appropriate here, and we add one for same reasons as in here. And now we can finally see how many runs we have got and how many we expected. So the observed number of runs is 13.03, whereas the expected number of runs is 1247 uh, approximately, which means that we can suspect negative autocorrelation for S&P 500. It's a very prominent Stavast fact established in the literature that the US stock market, represented here by S&P 500, has negative autocorrelation, is anti-persistent, uh, returns oscillate. So how significant is this finding? How reliable can we um, count on this effect? Well, here we just have to calculate the standard deviation of the number of runs, the standard error of our test, and then we can do a z-stat, and then we can do some hypothesis testing. So the standard deviation of the number of runs can be quite easily calculated using the expected number of runs and the sample size. So for variance, we need to multiply the expected number of runs by the expected number of runs minus 1 and divide by n minus 1. That would give variance. Very, uh, looks very similar to conventional variance formulas, even has n minus 1 in the denominator. So nothing uh, too surprising. And for standard deviation, we just raise it to the power of a half to take the square root. And now for the z-stat, we can simply subtract from the observed number of runs, the expected number of runs, and divided by the standard deviation of runs. So this would give us a positive result when we expect negative autocorrelation, a negative result when we expect positive autocorrelation, and if the z-stat is quite small in magnitude, we can conclude that market efficiency is not violated. So now we can do uh, some hypothesis testing using the uh, side by stats packages. So basically calculate the p-value as a two-tailed z-test. So two times one minus SPS normal cumulative distribution function, input the absolute value of the z-stat here. This basically gives you the same procedure that we implement in Excel for a two-tailed z-test, isn't it? And now we can build some interface returning our uh, output and uh, printing whether the market is efficient, mean reverting or trending. So first, what we need to check? Well, first we need to check if the p-value that we've got is less or greater than 10%, the conventional uh, confidence threshold. Because if the p-value is greater than 0 0.1, is greater than 10%, then we can conclude that the market is efficient. However, if it's less than 0 0.1, less than 10%, we need to look at the Z-stat and conclude whether the market is trending or mean reverting. Here, we can already see that the market is inefficient if the p-value is less than 10%, but we can also extract some additional information in terms of whether it is trending, persistent, or oscillating, anti-persistent, mean reverting. So, elif, our Z-stat, is positive, we have got more observed runs than we expect, so the market is mean reverting. And else, if the Z-stat is negative, if we observe too few runs, we can print that the market is uh, trending. And finally, we can actually print all of our numerical input, build some interface here, so we'll print the number of observed runs, we can print uh, the integer of the number of expected runs. Then we can print the standard deviation of runs, rounded up to, rounded to the two significant digits. Then we can print the z-stat, rounded to four significant digits, as well as the p-value, rounded to four significant digits as well. And we can run this code and conclude that the market is min-reverting, which means that our initial speculations are fulfilled, and uh, the American market, the US market, is indeed uh, oscillating. It's mean reverting, it's anti-persistent, um, highlighted by the fact that we have got way more uh, observed runs than expected runs, a Z-stat of 2.27, which is significant at 5%, p-value being 0.02. However, the beauty of uh, a Python script is that we can uh, 
easily change the ticker or the time period and see how the results change. So for example, for the uh, UK market, the FTSE 250 index, uh, represented in Yahoo Finance as uh, FTMC, we can see that in less than a couple of seconds, we conclude that the market is trending for the uh, UK index, FTSE 250, with way less runs than you would expect, uh, judging by the nature of the data, and the result, again, being significant at 5%, with a negative Z stat and a p-value of less than 2%. And finally, we can check the Japanese market, uh, represented by Nikkei 225, and for this particular application, we see that the market is efficient, with a Z stat less than 1, with the number of runs being slightly higher than what you expect, but not high enough to conclude that the market deviates significantly from the random walk uh, null hypothesis, from the efficient market hypothesis. Uh, again, uh, fulfilled, confirmed, and confirmed by the p-value of uh, 32%, which is much higher than the threshold of 10% that we've chosen. Obviously, if you wish, you can change this threshold to 5% or even 1% if you are very, uh, very conservative in your estimations. But what is also interesting is that we can uh, change that to be not the indices, but individual tickers. So, for example, we can check whether a stock like Walmart is uh, behaving efficiently or not. And we see that it's mean reverting, just as the market it's based on. We can check a UK stock like Tesco and see whether it's uh, mean reverting or um, trending. And we can see that for Tesco, the market is indeed efficient. So this particular template allows you to quickly test for market efficiency on any return series you want. And that's all there is uh, in terms of building your Python script for the runs test application. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'd be to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.